Every now and then a boat comes along that really gets the juices flowing and behind me here is one of them. This is the brand new Fairline Squadron 58. Now the 58 name is a bit of a legend, almost an icon within the Fairline brand. The previous 58 was hugely popular with buyers, customers, dealers, everybody loved it. It was a really practical, stylish boat with excellent sea keeping and really held its value well. And this is its successor. It shares the same name. It's been many years since we last had a 58 in the range, but this is the same bloodline, if you like. And there is an awful lot of really interesting things going on. You can see straight away it's the very first Fairline with fold down balconies. And we are going to give you the full tour, all the details, everything you need to know so that you can see for yourself what makes it quite so unique and special. So let's get on board and show you around. My name is Hugo Andre. This is Motorboat and Yachting. Let's go and tour it. Let's get a few of the basics out of the way first. So the prices for this start at 1.55 million pounds, ex taxes, but this particular boat kitted out with all the options and extras, and there are an awful lot of them, comes out to 2.38 million ex taxes. Now in terms of length, it is 58 foot four inches long, 16 foot four inches wide. It has a draft of four foot five inches, and it is powered by a pair of Volvo D13 900 horsepower engines as standard or 1,000 horsepower as options. They are shaft driven, so very simple, reliable, easy to look after. Now, one of the first things you notice is the size of this bathing platform. It's absolutely enormous, and this is part of the Beach Club pack. And the reason it's so long is that it's actually an extending platform. So this is in its extended mode here. You can see how much further it comes out from the normal uh, aft end of the boat, but it also lifts up and then tucks in so it is then flush with this corner here and flush with the deck above. And that's a really neat idea because it means you can get away with a smaller berth in terms of mooring fees, but then you've got the extra space when you want to use it. Now you can get a Williams on here. You can fit a Williams 345 on this platform, but the lovely thing once you've launched it, so it still goes down, you can use it effectively as a lift for your tender that will go down into the sea and make launch and recovery really easy. But then you've got this long extended space where you can put out sun loungers or bean bags, or in fact, you can even move the furniture from up in the cockpit down onto this level for the full stylish beach club effect. We've got a retractable passerelle, Nothing particularly unusual about that, but long and neat, and it tucks all the way inside that letterbox. And then you can see there's a lot going on on this transom here. Now, under here are all storage lockers. They're controlled by buttons here. If we just press the central locker, for example, there, you can see that swings open. You've got good space inside there. I'll just close that up. You've got another bin locker in there. I might just need to get my fingers in to show you that. You can see you've got, uh, that's actually an ice bucket, sorry, not a bin, I think the bin is on the other side. So you can fill that with ice, put your champagne bottles, keep them in there. But my favorite bit on here is this, you can see barbecue in out. So if I press that button, extending out of the transom from underneath the cockpit floor is a retractable wet bar. Now, how cool is that? We'll just keep it going for a little bit longer so you can see the full effect. But you see there is a sink, relatively shallow one, obviously, because it can't be too deep, and a Kenyan grill. But how good is that to be able to have that completely concealed when it's underway, nicely protected, get to your favorite anchorage, whir out the barbecue, get cooking. Let's see if I can just pop that back in. You do need to keep your finger on it. It's not a one touch button. Now, just while I hear you can see there are other buttons further forward and those are for that hydraulic platform that I showed you earlier. So everything is close to hand and exactly where you need it to be. You don't have to run up into the cockpit to do any of it. Now there is another button over here that I wanted to show you before we go up into the cockpit. And that is this little button here and it is called the welcome home button. And what that does is when you come onto the 
onto your boat at night, you press that button and then it sequentially lights up all the LED lighting. So you'll see it, you've got LED lighting under these steps, and it'll go one, two, three, work your way up, and then you've got lights up on the cockpit and they will gradually light up one, two, three. So as you come on, you get this rather magnificent light display of it gradually lighting up and welcoming you home, as the button says. Now we've got a transom shower in here. You can see there is access to the crew cabin under here. But then as we move up into the cockpit, this is where the real excitement starts to happen. Now, very stylish deck gear. Obviously you still need to get the basics right and we have got a winch cleat fairly through there. But first, let's have a look at this cockpit area. Now, there are a number of options. This is all part of the Beach Club package and you can see what that means is you get this lovely angled see-through clear transom and this freestanding furniture. So this is actually made up of four separate pieces of furniture. You can see they're all relatively light and easy to move around and they're shaped to fit that glass transom absolutely exactly. So all of this can turn around and face into the cockpit. You can pull it further out to give you more space or you can have it like this arranged to face back out over the stern of the boat. It's a really clever way of doing it. You've got so much flexibility, to, but makes perfect sense. When you're at anchor, you want to look out over the back of the boat. When you're cruising along at speed, you probably feel more comfortable facing forward. But very stylish design too. We've got this kind of rope back, stainless steel, and a couple of extra freestanding stools. This table obviously opens up too. So you've got lots and lots of options. But check out these side platforms. These are absolutely enormous. Now we have seen these before on galleons and so on, but it's a very, very good execution of an idea. Now these are all hydraulically powered, so that just makes them a lot quieter than electric. It means they're very smooth, very powerful, very quiet. And they're really big too. You can see we've got a couple of freestanding sort of modern director style chairs. These do in fact fold up and will all live down in the crew cabin below. But you can see just how much extra space that gives. And let's have a look on this side too, because here we've got the full bar effect going on. These two stools here, they screw into the deck and out of interest, they can also be repositioned on here. So when the balcony is folded up, those get repositioned there and you've still got that lovely bar area there. We'll have a better look at that in a minute. Now you can see we've got little rope uh, stanchions to keep things safe. And I love the fact that under here, they've just made a very neat little storage area. So you can put the stanchions and ropes in there. And when it folds up, you, they're all exactly where they need to be. You don't have to go searching for them somewhere else. Another little detail I wanted to show you is, look at this, this LED light inset into the deck. It is so well thought through in terms of detailing. There's so much going on. Another cool thing here, this is what the designer Andrew Pope calls the afterburners, but you can see their little styling features, but they're backlit again. And again, these form part of that sequential display I talked about earlier, but really cool looking thing. Now, when these balconies are up, you still get a decent walkway along the side deck. Lovely thick teak. Here is the diesel filler. Good to see that we've got plenty of cleats along the way too for your springs. Good sturdy stainless steel grab rail and a nice clean design. So there's nothing pushing your shoulder out when you move along the side deck. Now here we are on the foredeck area. As you'd expect, we've got a couple of storage bins on the way. And then this lovely area here. So nice U-shaped U seating, good size backrest. So it's comfortable to sit up here. And then a sun pad here that doubles as both an aft facing seat if you want a more sociable arrangement and a sun pad with a bit of a headrest if you just want to chill out and catch some rays. Got cup holders along either side of this. And this is a rather neat feature too. So if you're sitting here, you obviously want somewhere to put your little tray of snacks and drinks and bottle of chilled wine. But also if you want to put it out of the way, that just lifts up and that whole thing tucks away very neatly in there. And now you've got a perfect walkway through. There's nothing to trip over. Just gives you a bit more space to move around. Again, probably put it away at night when you close up the boat. 
Now this seat here is extended, or the sun pad is extended a little way beyond the edge of this molding here. And again, that's just to make it usable as a seat. If you want to just perch on the front here, it just means there's a bit of extra room. You can stretch out and gives you some height rather than just being a sun pad. All the deck gear, as you'd expect, very smart. Ultra anchor, locker, access for all the chains and putting your fenders and lines. So although there's an awful lot of detail going on, they haven't ignored the important sea keeping and crewing duties. It should still work as well as any previous Fairline. Good sized bins for ropes and fenders. And then we'll come back down the side deck, see water and diesel fillers there too, and another one of these magnificent balconies. Now let's go up to the flybridge whilst we're here. Really good chunky teak steps. Again, LED strip lighting in them. Now here are all the individual controls for the lights. There is that sort of one touch welcome home button, but if you want to switch anything on and off, you've got all of those. And here are the controls for the balcony. So you've got the starboard balcony on this side, and you've got exactly that mirror controls on the other side, so you can put the, the port balcony down too. Really good wide steps up to the flybridge. Sometimes these can be a bit narrow and steep, but rather cleverly, and I'll explain how they've done that, in order to create this space in the cockpit, this angle here, this, these sliding patio doors, are not at 90 degrees. They're offset by nine degrees, so it's a slightly asymmetric angle, and that creates a bit more space to have these steps without them eating into the cockpit. Very simple idea, but really effective. So you can have, afford to have a nice gentle slope down without eating up too much space from the cockpit. And we've got a couple of lockers behind here. So that is purpose designed for a life raft if you want to keep that stored in there. It's exactly where it should be accessible in the cockpit. And then there's also a little, oh, I think there's still some cleaning fluids there, but those are all the manual pumps and so on, fire shut off valves. So let's go up onto the flybridge. And look at this, really good size open flybridge. So sun pads at the stern. Again, a very clever little styling idea here. Just by putting an angle on that glass balustrade, they've just created a bit of extra space, gives it a slightly smoother profile from the exterior, and of course, a bit of extra length when you stretch out on those sunbeds. Now there is a hard top. The hard top is an option, but you do get a fairly decent sort of T-top style radar arch even without that. You can see that this one has got a uh, sun canopy fitted, so electric extending sun canopy gives you a bit of shade over here if you want to, uh, or if you're in danger of overheating up top. Now, again, you can see these angles that they're playing with. Instead of having all these 90 degree, rather boxy linear shapes, got just little angles and it just creates a bit of interest. Even on this opening for the staircase, it just gets a little bit wider as you come up and almost guides you through the boat. Wet bar, exactly the same. We've got a bit of an angle on the wet bar. Have a quick look under there. You can see we've got another grill up here so you can barbecue on the flybridge or on the aft platform. Sink under there. All the usual bits of equipment, fridge, ice maker. I think we've got a bin in there, we have. Lovely big seating area here. Natural teak table, little folding wings that extend it or close it up if you want a bit more space and freedom of movement around it. Beautiful teak decking. And this is a simple but effective idea too. In this mode, you have got kind of a forward facing chaise long, but these are in fact infill cushions that can lift out. And this support slides in there. And then all of a sudden you've got a small U-shaped seating area that is a bit more sociable underway. It's probably nicer to sit down, but you've got some forward facing seating, you've got some aft facing seating. And of course it means you can keep the skipper company. Just point out there's a couple of cup holders down there too. And then twin helm seats. Now these adjust for reach. You can see they slide backwards and forwards on there. Quite cool sort of stylized plinths that they sit on actually. 
fairly simple helm layout. Obviously the main helm is down below inside the saloon, but lovely to be able to sit here and drive out in the open air when you want to. We've got a forward raked air deflector. We'll see how well that works when we're actually underway, but hopefully we'll get a chance to test it soon. Now these are the controls for the roof. And if I look up above us here, you can see the hard top has a large opening fabric sunroof in it. We've got lights all the way around. We've got speakers in there. And nice to see relatively slender stainless steel support. So they're not blocking your view at all. When you're sat at the helm, you get a really good view all the way around. It's nothing that is gonna block your view. Right, let's go downstairs, start the interior tour. I told you there was a lot. <laughs> there is an awful lot to see, and an awful lot to try and remember. Now, we mentioned this area here earlier because that is where you have a, a, effectively a bar area. Now, it's not uh, the normal hinge up window. This is in fact an electric up down window. I can probably demonstrate that if I can find the buttons are here. There we go. And look how quickly that whirs up. It's got a built-in blind to it, and in fact, it's one touch. I don't need to keep my finger on it at all, but I'm just gonna keep it down at the moment because then you get the full impression of how lovely and open this is. Doors slide over to this side, and there's that nine degree angle I spoke about earlier. So yes, of course, you lose a little bit of space inside, but because it's over on this side, all you're really losing is a little bit of cabinet space, and the win in terms of space in the cockpit is well worth it. That also means you get a slightly <coughs> longer galley on this side because, <coughs> because of that angle on this side, the port side galley is that much bigger and it is a really good size galley we've got here. Now, one of the other key decisions they made was not to have a full height fridge freezer because that blocks the view. When you're sat at the helm up here and trying to look stern, if you have a full height fridge freezer, that will block a big chunk of view but they have made sure you get plenty of chiller space. So there are two big chiller drawers. Now these can either be fridges or freezers. You can choose uh, what mode they are in. So you can have one as a fridge and one as a freezer. You've also got the option of uh, more fridge space and freezer space over on this side. So this at the moment is the sideboard. They've just got storage, but you can have a fridge, a freezer. You can even have a wine cooler built into this cabin here. So there's lots of extra storage space and lots of way to create more cooling space if you need it. There is a small half size dishwasher under here. We've got the oven, induction hob, sink under here. Lots more storage all the way around here and in fact overhead too. So no shortage of space to Prepare your food either, you've got a big worktop area. And this is of course that bar that opens up onto the terrace. And you'll see there is a little folding ledge there that just creates enough space to put your drinks or a bowl of peanuts, whatever it might be. Now just one very low level step up into the seating area. Whilst we're going there, it's worth taking a quick look in here because it's, it's Fairline's usual beautiful glass cabinetry, all perfectly fiddled with spaces for all the branded glasses. Lovely fluted woodwork here. This is the, uh, the um, gloss dark walnut, but you can also have matte oak or, or I think it's satin oak actually, or gloss oak if you prefer a lighter wood. Useful little storage area for the remote controls for the TV. Now that is a high-low TV that springs out from there. And then these very stylish air vents. So fair line, rather than little plastic vents, you've got properly lacquered wooden ones. Now that angle play is still going on here. You can see this has got a slightly unusual angle on it. All these furniture has slightly unusual angles and some really interesting modern fabrics. I'm not quite sure what this is called, but it's a sort of bobbly, woolly, certainly not sheep skin, but it has a much more texture than would normally be the case. But you can have leathers or different, you know, smoother materials if you want to. Uh, you could even just get your shears out and give that a bit of a trim. But actually, really nice, modern, textured, big, comfy seating. Now this table here is a high-low table. That is, I think, the electric controls for that are over here. So I won't go all the way, but you can see that rises up so that that can become a dining table. There is also a little 
pull release under here and that enables you to slide it in and out. So if you need to have it closer to you when you're dining and then you can pull it further away when it's in coffee table mode. Uh, now, whilst we're here, I also want to show you under this sofa, there is a latch and that pulls out and that is where all the Fairline crockery lives. So very cleverly done. I barely even know that's there, but it's really nice to have a proper sorted space for all your kitchenware. Now in here, we've seen this before, I think on the Phantom 65, but there is a little charging station for four Sonos speakers. So guests can pick up one of those, take it into their cabin, out onto the foredeck. You can take your music with you. You can even take it to the beach. Helm station, very smartly done. Two individual chairs. Again, these adjust for height and reach. In fact, I think it's just the, the actual main helm seat that adjusts for height, but they both adjust for reach. Only tiny compromise is that, of course, if you have a navigator in there, they have to get in and out past the helm's person. The other thing I really like to see is that on both sides of the boat, there are electric windows. So if you look down here, there's a button. You can see that electric window slides up and down and there is a matching one over on the port side. So really easy to communicate with your crew. It means you've got a lovely flow of fresh air and it just gives you that inside outside space. Now really good headroom at the helm. It's comfortable to sit or stand. We've got twin screens. There is access to all the systems on here. So you can check uh, the engine, uh, you know, the main engine information or the electricity supply or the lighting. You've got access to all of those. Handy little glove box for remote controls and sunglasses and phones and so on. Now, also worth pointing out that they have managed to integrate the Volvo joystick with the proportional electric side power thrusters to enable you to give full joystick control. So even though it is a conventional shaft drive boat, you have still got joystick control so that you can take care of that all easily. It has electric uh, rudders, so it will change the rudders, the engines and the thrusters to put you exactly where you need to be. Big single piece double curvature screen, so no central mullion, you've got great views out all around, and just to prove you can look out through that stern without that full height fridge freezer, you get a terrific view all the way around. Big central windows, so maximum view. And then we start to move down into the lower deck. There's one step by the helm, and then a little sequence of curving steps. Let's Let's go forward to start with. We'll go into the VIP cabin. And very noticeable here that there's good standing headroom too. I'm six foot one, there's a good, probably four or five inches above me. And that's partly by having a slightly taller top sides. The floor is sunk a little bit lower and you get really good floor space. A lot of the time on boats this size in the forward VIP, the door is hard up against the bed, but here you've got a really good gap between the door and the bulkhead. Just gives you that feeling of space and luxury. We've got lots of interesting fluting going on on the woodwork. Beautiful fabric. Full height hanging wardrobe. Lots of individual drawers. And look how beautifully matched the grain is on all these. Very fair line. Good size hull windows, little opening port, more storage up above in these lockers around the eye level. Just see the air conditioning vents around here. Very smart inbuilt bed lights. Handy little tray for your glass of Perrier in this account. Obviously controls for lights and so on. Built in blinds above the window and a little vanity desk area here. Now here's another lovely little detail. You can see there is a stool down here and it looks like it's a freestanding stool, but I can see that that could cause problems at sea. But in fact, it's not quite freestanding. What it is, is hinged. So it might be a little bit awkward to do one handed. I might have to come over here, but it swings out and over 
and that just gives you the legroom you need when you do want to sit there. It creates extra space, but it is still attached to the floor, so it's not, it's not going anywhere from side to side, but it will just hinge back in and tuck away neatly when you're not sitting on there. Again, you've got these unusual angles going on here, and that creates a little bit more room in the ensuite bathroom. Now, a nice simple decor on here. It's a slightly new sort of soft matte effect, gray lacquer, smart little sink unit, and a good size shower in there. Just check the headroom, but yep, just as much headroom in there. So plenty of space. Opening port behind there if you want to get a bit of ventilation in here. And look at the detail on this door too. There's an inset strip of burr walnut within that straight grain. So lots of lovely detail. Moving back, we've got twin cabin on the starboard side. Now obviously this is the smallest of the cabins and the beds are quite tight. There's not a huge amount of space between them, but they will close up. See if I can find the button. Is that the button? No, no. Oh, yeah. there we go. You can see those slide together and you can create a double there too. But again, good headroom, not full headroom over the head of the bed, but plenty of standing headroom at the foot. And we've got a hanging locker there too. And then a curve round into the main master cabin. Just worth noting that in this locker here, obviously we've just got storage, but you can have extra freezer capacity down there if you want to. And that is not where the washer dryer goes because there is separate space, oh, separate space for that behind this door. So if I open that up, there is indeed the washer dryer. So you can have a freezer and a washer dryer down there. But first, let's admire this. Now that is quite some master cabin on a 58 foot boat. You can see flat floor, floor all the way around. There's no intrusion on the floor space and you've got the full width right out to the top sides. So again, rather than being vertical, that looks like it flares out just a little bit to give maximum shoulder room at head height. Again, no intrusion overhead, full height all the way around the bed. Big TV screen set in this bulkhead, lots of storage. Really comfortable, deep curved sofa, big hull windows, opening ports, really comfy bed. Again, lots of detail here. It's like it's all been sort of ballooned out, underlit lighting. More of that fluted woodwork, leather bed head, really beautiful cabin. And then this is a neat feature too. You can see this handle here. They've actually made a little recess for that so that when you open it, the door opens all the way. There's no lost space because of the depth of the handle. And a similar thing here too. This is the access to the ensuite bathroom. Rather than having a door handle, it's a little flick like that. Open it up and you are into the ensuite bathroom. More of that matte grey finish, loo in one corner, shower. There is a small step up, just worth noting, but good wide opening, little round sink here, and a decent size shower. Not enormous, but you've got a shelf you can sit down on there. And rather than going for the rain shower effect, they've just gone for a standard rail mounted one, but plenty of space to the loot in there and a bit more storage under there. But I really like the way they've thought so hard just about how the doors open, what handles they use, some of the detailing, again, that burr effect there. They've made the most of every single millimeter of space. I ought to point it out too that that ensuite bathroom for the VIP does have access from this lobby area too. So for day guests and of course for the twin cabin on the starboard side, that is also the bathroom they use. Right, let's just make our way back out. There's a couple more areas to show you. 
First is the engine space. Uh, access is through this hatch in the cockpit. And again, because of that angled entrance, you get a good size hatch down there. You're not trying to pull up floorboards in the saloon. Let me make my way down here. Actually, that's a pretty decent ladder. There is a bit of angle on it and relatively soft plastic steps. And here are the two engines. So this has the larger 1,000 horsepower D13 Volvo engines. The standard ones are 900 horsepower. Now, I understand that they have had a very quick sea trial in this. And so far, they're getting speeds of 33 knots out of these engines. But you can see they are standard shafts that just runs straight out the back. We've got the generator here, twin fuel tanks on either side. It's a total of 2,770 litres, so it should give you a decent cruising range. Got the hot water tank. And then behind here, it's actually under the, or behind the back of the crew cabin, there is a Seakeeper 9 stabiliser as well. So talking of crew cabins, let's show you that. Clamber out of there. Close that up. Make sure nobody else drops down there. So final part to show you, the crew cabin. Now the crew cabin is an option. You, a standard, it's just a lazarette. But one of the other options is you can have a sort of halfway house whereby this becomes a day head for the beach club area. So if you don't want the full crew cabin, you can have that fitted out as storage and a day head. But drop down and show you that. We've got a small sink area here. Oh, I've just knocked the light off. Not a great deal of storage space for the crew if you do have crew on board. There is the bed itself, the Seakeeper 9, I believe, is under, but sort of behind this panel here, so you can access it from here. And then a small ensuite toilet and shower. Quite clever that they've got this separate to the sink over here, and there is some natural light in here because it comes through the door itself, actually has a window in it, but mostly artificially lit. Obviously, it's not a big crew cabin. It's a 58-foot boat. Most of the time, you're not going to be having permanent crew, but as an overflow cabin, or if you really need a captain on board, you have got that option. So let's close that up. Lock it down. I'm just going to finish up this presentation sitting at this rather lovely bar area. We'll do it that way round. There is so much going on on this boat, so many clever features to look at, so many neat ideas to admire, and all those clever use of angles and woodwork and grain, it's just such a heavily detailed boat. I think that helps explain some of that pricing difference between the price from and the price as tested. But it also looks like they haven't forgotten the important practicalities that you need for a comfortable cruising boat. So I hope you've enjoyed this tour to please give me your opinions. I would love to see your comments below because this for me is one of the most interesting boats of the year. We're very much hoping we'll be sea trialing it soon, so keep an eye out. But in the meantime, thank you very much for watching. My name is Hugo Andre. This is Motorboat and Yachting.